Well, good morning, church family and friends. Oh, it is a joy to be back in the house of worship. I give all thanks to God who has been so wonderful and so blessing in my life and in your life as well. And I sincerely thank Reverend Michael Morning for the awesome message last Sunday, his care of us as we, as we remembered and loved on our heavenly saints. And we just remember them and just give thanks for all that they have left us with. And we share the joy of this morning as we welcome our youth praise band this morning as they will minister to us. So God has been so good, so good, so good. So today we will continue with our journey of stewardship as we all love that aspect of, of our church worship but it's that season where we really do pay attention to how, what God has given to us and giving back to God, which everything belongs to God anyway. Our scripture takes us to this conversation of distraction. I'm distracted. I'm already ready for 325 this afternoon. Don't know about you, but I'm already looking forward to 325. So I'm already distracted a little bit. Ask the Holy Spirit to just calm my eagerness of expectation. But, you know, we're going to just control ourselves. We're going to control ourselves. But distracted. What are we distracted by as being stewards and good stewards? Not just stewards, but good stewards of all that God has given to us. What is it that draws your attention away from your call to be a disciple of Christ? Not that followers of Jesus aren't allowed to enjoy the beauty. Oh, if you woke up or yesterday in the mist when Amy and I was about and the snow started, just this little wetness and wetness. And then by the evening, it was sticking and she was all excited. Oh, gosh, who wouldn't be distracted by the joy of a child and snow? and playing in snow. So we're allowed to embrace the beauty and the things that God has given to us. The Christian life is marked by joy and surrounded by wonder. Yet, like the disciples in our scripture, and we, are, we can be distracted by what we see around us and lose sight. Come on, church, lose sight for being to live a life of proclamation and invitation. We're called to invite people to have a relationship with God. We're called to bring the salvation to people that don't know Jesus Christ. We're called to share the joy of Jesus Christ. So church, what are we distracted by in this season of so much stuff going on, Thanksgiving, getting ready for Advent, getting ready for Christmas, welcoming in a new year? There's so much that can distract us. So we're asking God to keep our eyes, though, on what is, what is eternal. Because this materialistic earthly things are here just for a time, and then they're gone away. Come, let us worship the God who came to seek and save the lost. Let us worship, let us welcome God into our homes and especially into our hearts. Let us joyfully and with gratitude worship God. As we prepare for this wonderful Second Sunday noisy offering, remember we're purchasing motorbikes, motorcycles for the, the people in Bolivia, for the ministers in Bolivia, that they can get out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to invite um, Miss Deanna to just give us some some marching type music just so we can go collect these wonderful, wonderful, noisy offerings that we have collected this morning. And Amy has already started up here. Bless her heart. <laughs> Come on, let's go. So if um, we have a couple of young people that may not feel too, too old, if you would grab a container there and let's go share and collect our noisy offerings. Here you go. Oh, 
like that. Hold it like that. Come on, keep walking, keep walking. Say thank you. Right here, right here. Oh, thank you. Dear God, we thank you for this beautiful offering. We thank you for the blessings of the ministers who want to just spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for these awesome young people. Let them know that we love them and we're so, so grateful for all the gifts and talents that they share with you and with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.
stand as you are able and join me in the calls for worship. We gather in the beautiful space, worship surrounded by art and craft made by hands like ours. To give praise to the source of all our gifts. We are blessed to have this space to call our church home. We are more blessed to be disciples of Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us worship in this place, giving praise to God. We, we will worship, worship in joy and in truth. truth. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me. Merciful God, we come before you this day as those who are often afraid to confess all the many ways in which we have disappointed and betrayed you. You have given us continual opportunities to serve and love others, but we have drawn into lives of selfishness and greed. We have turned our backs on others in need. We have denied the gifts you have given us. Where can we turn now that we have run from you? Your voice calls us to come home, to come to you unafraid, to receive forgiveness and healing. Open our hearts this day to receive these magnificent blessings. Help us to understand the many ways in which you love us, and help us share that love with all those whom we meet. For we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Even though we have turned away from God, yet God is faithful to us. We are beloved of God and recipients of God's love and blessings. Rejoice, children of God, for God's mercies are ever before us. Amen. Amen. on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil and that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. The second reading is from Luke. It will be your opportunity to testify to them. So make up your minds not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. I will give you words and wisdom that none of your enemies will be able to oppose or prove wrong. Even parents, brothers, relatives, and friends will betray you and kill some of you. Everyone will hate you. 
because you are committed to me, that not a hair on your head will be lost. By your endurance, you will save your life. The word of God for the people of God. Should be up on the screen. We have a, a slide. Yeah, seek and you shall find is our anthem, and we need your help. So I'm going to sing uh, bits and pieces of this verse that you see above us, or the chorus actually, and uh, you repeat back to me. So let's try B flat chord. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. It's a small one now. Have faith. The Lord will answer your prayer. Let's put them all together. One, two, three, four. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Have faith. The Lord will answer your prayer. Great. All right. I'll turn around, and when I turn around, you just sing away. All right? Your prayers. 
you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Have faith, the Lord will answer your prayers. People of God, rejoice and sing. Leave your troubles with the Savior King. Have faith, the Lord will answer your prayers. all our love to our music ministry this morning. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful way to open up our worship experience. Beautiful young people. Beautiful young people. As we go to the Lord in prayer. Creator, Holy Creator, we pray these things not just for us. We pray for others, dear God, that they will have a relationship with you that you will open doors that seem closed, that you will show them love, forgiveness, and understanding. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, for Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Turning your pain into gain. Now, we've been talking about the prayer of Jabez, and I hope you've taken some time to go to that wonderful small little place in our Bible that talks about Jabez. It's written from the perspective of an obscure prayer found in 1 Chronicles 4. Everything written, though, in the Bible is not as vague as it may seem. For you see, Jabez was an honorable person, more honorable than his brother's. His mother named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to you in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God, and God granted his request. People of God, especially our youth this morning, remember your past does not have to determine your present. I want you to listen well today, Church of a Living God. Some of you are, are needing to break out of the living in your past and experience the awesome pressure God wants to bring into your life this very moment, this very day. Buried in the genealogies of the Old Testament is this precious nugget called Jabez. In the days in which he was born, they took considerable time naming a child. I'm sure all of you have your own recollection and own knowledge of why you are named who you're named. Some of us were named because of a precious grandfather, grandmother. Some of you were named because of a book, uh, author of a book. But a name really matters. And it has meaning, meaning to those that named you, especially when you were baptized with that name. The name of Jabez signifies his, his mother that she gave birth to him in pain. She caused him pain. 
I'm, that's a little bit much for me, you know, to think about, you know, the fact that I had four, four kids. They all were, give, were born by cesarean, and I would name them each Jabez, one, two, three, and four. But, you know, I had different levels of anesthesia to deal with each one of them. Each one was a different way. I can tell you one was not as nice to having a spinal tap versus having that wonderful epidural and one was under general. I mean, it was just a plethora of anesthesia. But I can't imagine them naming them Jabez, even though there was some pain in their delivery. The harsh words, the painful memory of childhood, some of us have endured because of our names. When we named Bianca, we were hesitant because of the BM initials. We knew what BM meant. And then as children learned, you know, their hygiene and stuff and telling the teacher, I have to go do a BM. And she was like, they're saying my initials. I said, no, that's not what they're saying, you know. But she put it that way, BM. So we said, you're BGM, Bianca Giovanna Martinelli. So you got that G, so you don't have to just live in the BM aspect of it. There was a man named Charles Francis Adams, a 19th century political figure and a diplomat. He kept a diary. One day he entered, went fishing with my son today, a day wasted. His son, Brooke Adams, also kept a diary, which is still in existence today. On that same day that his dad wrote what he wrote, Brooke Adams made this entry went fishing with my father, the most wonderful day of my life. You can live with the name and the reputation that the name makes you, or you can make a decision to live the way God determined. I have resolved to live the greatest life I possibly can, to look for the good in life instead of looking at the pain. The Bible says in Psalm 139 that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the plans, my daughter, I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Your past does not need to determine your present. It did not for Jabez and it absolutely does not for any of us. We need to be optimistic about our lives. Consider Michael. Michael, a fifth grader, decided to run for the president of the student council. During the campaign, Michael and his younger brother went to the pediatrician for a checkup. The doctor, noticing the campaign button on his, on his shirt, volunteered that he too had run for president of the student council long ago when he was in the sixth grade, but had not won. Several days later, Michael called his mom with the election results. It looks like I'm going to be a doctor, mom. What a way to look at life. What a way to look at life. Isn't that something? I'm not a, I'm not, I did not win this, but I won something else. Look at my future. Look at what I'm going to be doing in my future. How are you going to live today? What past does not have to determine, your past does not have to determine your future. You can begin today to shun the labels of the past, walk past the lies others have developed around you, not wallow in the legacy of someone else's plan for you. You can take the Jabez challenge this morning. Live the life God has ordained for you. You need to understand your present does not have to also determine your future. Jabez now had a lot of things to overcome in his life. The short verses don't tell us much about his plight, though there are clues if we exegesis this particular scripture. First, we know he had to overcome his name, the one who causes pain. We also know that, but we know that he was also more honorable than his brothers. How many of us have experienced sibling rivalry? Jabez was elevated above his brothers is an indication that there might have been this rivalry taking place in life. I have two brothers. Now, nah, there was no rivalry. Yeah, right. <laughs> they were athletic. They were truly athletic. 
they were the pride of my dad because they could run, they could play football, basketball, soft, baseball, all of that. I didn't have any of it. I was just this person that cheered them on. When I would go to PE, <laughs> my PE teacher, she'd say, Clarissa, I'm calling your dad. And I'm like, oh, Lord. Miss Armstrong. I said, we played volleyball. And I'm the short, skinny girl with these tall girls who love to spike it just because they could. So I'm at the net trying to do what I can do, and they would just go, bam. And I said, enough. I'm not going to do PE. I didn't tell my parents that. I didn't tell the reverend that. Definitely didn't tell him that. So Ms. Armstrong, who happens to be a member of my dad's church, said, I'm going to have to talk to your dad. You're not, you're not participating. I'm not athletic. Why am I going to be out here trying to do a basketball <laughs> to get hit in the face with a volleyball to run? The Navy got me better at that, though. I can tell you, I can run now. So the Navy got me better at that. So she didn't, she didn't understand how it made me feel that I had brothers. And she was their PE teacher, my older brother, my younger brother. So she knew that I just did, wasn't gifted in that way. But my brothers never really teased me about it to hurt my feelings, but they did tease me about it to be, a bro to be brothers. You know, like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you catch a ball? Why can't you, you know, run? Why can't you do those things? And I wanted to give up. I really wanted to give up because it's like, well, I'm never going to be f having trophies. I'm never going to have blue ribbons. I'm never going to win at this athletic thing. But then I discovered that I was good at something else. I was gifted with medical things. And I love caring for people. So I was hired by the obstetrician gynecologist in my hometown who is still now my big brother and the godfather to Marissa. And I could do things with a blood pressure cuff, with taking pulse and counting respirations and having these medical terms that my brothers still to this day, sis, what is this thing saying? <laughs> what is this medication? But I had to find what was my gift. It wasn't being an athlete, but it was being good at something else. And to this day, it's helped me get, navigate so many things in my life, Martin's life, in my kids' life, in my family's life, and having this understanding of medicine. The benefits which comes from using my talents were awesome. I had allowed my present situation of being a non-athlete not to drive me to, to drive me not to discover what I was good at. I would have missed a lot in life, people of God. I met Martin at my first duty station. He was also very athletic, this jock that he was, but he was also medically minded and excellent at it. So Jabez did not pray for God to just help him make it through. He prayed the Lord would bless him indeed and enlarge his territory, that his hands would be with him and that he would be protected from evil. It might seem life has handed you a lemon, church. Learn how to make lemonade so you can squish your, ter squish your ter thirst of the world. Listen, your future has already been determined. God has already ordained who you're going to be. From the hair on your head to the sole of your feet, God has already determined. Live your life by faith in Jesus Christ and hold on to the promise God gives you because he calls you his own. You do not have to let your presence determine your future. Let go, church, and let God. If you want to accomplish the pur purpose God has for your life, you're going to have to overcome something. There's no gain without some sort of price, people of God. There's got to be some pain sometimes. It is just a matter of how much you are wanting, how much you are willing to invest, and how much you want to achieve in the realm God has planned for you. This is not the time to give up. Here's the good news. It is the time to get up. 
not to sit, not to say, woe is me. Peter told the lame man, rise up and walk. Have you been lame by your life? Then get up and take the Jabez challenge. Arise above the circumstances of your life and walk into the promise of God. Some things that you can do is pray. Jabez prayed. He was an excellent example of what to pray for. He didn't just simply say, God help me. He prayed for what he wanted God to do in his life. He was optimistic. When you expect good things to happen, church, they are more likely to occur. Explore the possibilities. Don't just write out things as not being possible. All things are possible through Jesus Christ. Keep at it. Persistence will definitely pay off. You will never know if you can unless you try. The race is not won by the swift, but for those who endure till the end. Be flexible. Oh, my Lord, we've got to be flexible. This means willing, being willing to change. That C word, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It just means a new way of doing things. Too many people get stuck in the rut of saying, I don't want to change. I don't want things to change. I don't want, I want things to stay the way they are. But church, change opens up to new adventure. Change opens up to new experiences, new relationship. And that leads you into the other possibility of being a risk taker. Be willing to make mistakes along the way. Stick your head out of your shell and begin to move forward and watch God open doors, doors of opportunity for each and every one of us. God will change your pain into gain. You can change the outside of the package, but it will not change what is inside. We spent a lot of time doing, doing that. Jabez prayed from the heart. It wasn't a long, drawn-out affair of prayer. He got right to the point. It was as if he was saying, God, you know me already. You know my life. I can't hide anything from you. You know my, my good and my bad. You know my truth and my untruth. You know I've been places where I shouldn't have been, done things I shouldn't do. So why am I going to waste time trying to convince you when you already know me? So Jabez got right to the point. He said, I want you to bless me, God. You know mom called me a pain. You know she's put me with this name that's going to stick with me the rest of my life. But I know that I can do all things if you bless me. If you bless me. My name doesn't have to determine who I am. I don't have to be a pain born out of, born out of pain that my mom keeps talking about. I can be something so much better than that. Jabez prayed, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Someone said that we have decap decaffeinated the word blessing. We watered it down. We, we made it sort of lukewarm when we talk about blessing. Jabez wanted something mighty to happen in his life. He didn't want something lukewarm. He wanted it hot, sizzling to make a change in his life. Oh, God, bless me indeed. Blessing is the supernatural favor of God. It is God doing something for us, which we, could do, we cannot do for ourselves. It is asking God to open the windows of heaven and pour out, not drizzle out, pour out a blessing. When is the last time, Church of a Living God, you look back and said, I can see where God took my pain and turned it into gain. You need to take the Jabez challenge. Your troubles have not come to stay. They will pass, church, if you get hold of the supernatural power of God. If you step out in faith believing God will bless and enlarge each of our territories. God has more blessing for your life than you can possibly imagine. If you would just put your faith in him. James 4 and 2 says, you have not, you have not because you ask not. Matthew 7 and 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. When you fail to ask, we forfeit those blessings. We forfeit them, which God has wanted to give to each of us. When is the last time you truly asked God for what was 
a passion, an actual ask of your heart? When is the last time you asked God to expand your horizon so you could have a greater impact for the kingdom of God? Church, this is not a selfish prayer. This is a prayer to do more for the kingdom building, to do more for God. You might not think God can use you. God can take your pain and turn it into gain for his kingdom. It requires you to be available and to say yes to what God wants you to do. And he's ready right now, right at this moment, to give you all that you have, all your hearts to desire. He knows what your secrets of your hearts are. He wants to provide for you. He has a plan for you. He wants to do great and mighty things in your life. You have to know God, though, not just as an abstract part of your life. You have to know God personally. You have to know that we're going, we're going to have some ups and downs, and we've had ups and downs in the life of Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church. But God is saying if you just hold on a little bit longer, if you dream impossible dreams, if you pray that I will enlarge the territory of Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church, collectively, we pray that together. God will hear our prayers. God will bless us in ways that we have not even imagined. Church, I know that. I've seen this happen. My church that I was a lay leader in, we prayed this prayer in the season of Lent. We prayed for God to enlarge our territory, to do ministry in ways that we never thought we could do. God opened doors that just flung open. We were looking here, and God had a blessing over here. What an amazing thing. We want to pray, Lord Jesus, I want to admit to you that I've done wrong in my life and that I am sorry and will turn from wrongdoing and turn to right doing. Thank you for forgiving me and paying the price. I now give you the key of ownership of my life. Because it's not your life, church. It's not your life, people of God. It's God's life. We want to give God back the keys, the center of who we are. And ask him to come and put us under new management today. We want our church under new management. We want to stop worrying about what we don't have. Live into the abundance, the generosity of what God has given each and every one of us. We can't just keep saying we don't have this and we don't have that. Look what God has given us. We're not a scarcity congregation. We are a blessed congregation, abundant in so many gifts and talents. When do we live into that? Thanks for doing for me what I could not do for myself. Thank you, God. We can't make change happen. We can't grow this church. It's God that's going to do all of that. Can we, can we be that together? Can we pray that together? Can we stand together in that understanding and watch as a church as God moves in a mighty and awesome way for us. I pray that you will hear this prayer. Oh, that you will bless me indeed. Do something for my church that is so amazing. Enlarge her territory. Do something that will let people see the light and the love of Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church outside the walls of this church. Let us not do evil. Let us not cause pain to people. And God will hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And the church can say, amen. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We're going to, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Mm. God's got something for us, church. I just can't even begin to tell you God's got something for us. As I sat at jurisdictional conference last week and I looked around, God's got something for us. In the midst of all that we're experiencing in our jurisdiction, in our, in our denomination, God has something for us. 
if we just reach out with open hands and allow God to fill it with something so amazing that we can't even imagine. Just hallelujah, just hallelujah. We are so grateful for each and every one of you as prayers and concerns of this in this time of worship is before us. There's many that have situations and circumstances within their lives. We lift you up. We lift up the prayers in your heart. We're just so grateful for God to be in the midst of all that you are going through. And we know God is with you. As we prepare ourselves for the celebration of life service, homegoing service for <coughs> our statesman, Brother Ralph Hensel, next Saturday, we thank you for all the care and love that you have been showing Miss Bonnie and Miss Trish during this time of grief and loss. And she remarked about even before how many of you came out to the lake house with food. When they moved back to the city, you came by with food, you made phone calls, you sent cards. And I share with you on numerous occasions, Mr. Ralph's gratefulness for caring for him for your prayers. So we will turn his life, his soul, his spirit over to God next Saturday. Visitation 10 to 11.45 and his homegoing service to begin at 12 o'clock. We hope you will come, be here for Miss Bonnie and Miss Trish and the grandkids, the nieces and nephews. We just give God thanks and praise. The family also experienced a major loss. Mr. Ralph's great niece, 16 year old, was killed last week in a car accident. So her, her home going service was yesterday. So his sister is challenged by a lot. So we hope that you will just hold this family. They're experiencing quite a lot in loss and in grief. So we ask for your prayers and your care as we come together next Saturday. Lord, in your mercy, we hope that you will take time to go to the um, prayers of concerns and our devotionals and pray for those, send cards, send letters of encouragement, notes of encouragement for those that are seeking that support from us as we go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and loving God, we, your people, dear God, are in need of prayer, in need of healing, and in need of financial restoration, in need of faith restoration. Life is hard sometimes, dear Father. We turn to different things that distract us just so we don't have to deal with the circumstances that we find ourselves in. But we know that you are in the midst of all that we are experiencing. For you promised never to leave us, that you would always be with us in the good times and the bad times, in the in-between times, you are our God. We thank you for your people we thank you as we are lifting up this season of stewardship. Not just of the monetary, dear God, but of the people. Their gifts and talents, dear God, that are needed to move the ministry of this church forward. To bring souls to Christ. To bring the people into new relationships with you. Let us learn that saying yes is not to the pastor, to the leadership, but saying yes to you. Help us, dear God, in this time. Move us. Stir us. Be with us. We pray that all that we do and say, dear God, will be pleasing unto you. With that, we can pray the prayer you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father...
thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We thank you for all that you're doing. We will be um, continuing our stewardship. We will be planning our stewardship Sunday for the 18th of December. We're also planning for that to be a uh, Christmas fellowship um, as we, we are in the season of discerning what we're going to do with Wonderful Wednesday. Um, we want to move that to that wonderful day, the musical extra a Christmas extravaganza. Is that what it is, Brother Day? Christmas extravaganza. And um, so we're going to have an old-fashioned Christmas Methodist potluck. So be prepared for that. Come out. We have so many wonderful gifts, musical gifts, spoken word gifts that will be with us on that, on that Sunday. And our wonderful um, youth ministry, will be, youth praise band will be back with us and our handbell choir, our choir, and individuals that will be blessing us with their musical and spoken word gifts. So please mark your calendar for that beautiful occasion. Thank you everyone that came out and supported our Thanksgiving wonderful Wednesday. Uh, my thanks to Sophia who was in the kitchen and did a wonderful job. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed. We had a wonderful time doing that. It was really, really a blessing for us to be a blessing to you. So we invite you to just take a note of all the announcements um, coming up um, after Thanksgiving. Our wonderful concerts continue to go forward followed in December by the ecumen that will be with us. So, so many things to be able to celebrate. And then as our ecumenical Thanksgiving service at the Ridge will be happening on the 22nd of November, seven o'clock, bring a pie as we will once again get back into our relationship with our faith communities. So excited about this opportunity of getting back together as a community of faith with all of our siblings in Christ. So with that, as you are able, please stand for our doxology. together. Loving God, we come to you in thanksgiving, knowing that all we are and all we have is a gift from you. Lord, I know that when compared to all of the people on this earth, I am among the wealthy. How I thank you for the financial blessings you have given me. Yet there are times when it seems as if my charitable contributions make such a small difference when compared with rich stars and giant corporations. When I feel inconsequential, I am inclined to hang on to what I have rather than sharing it. Forgive me, Lord, when I am not a faithful steward of the resources you have entrusted to me. Thank you for the example of the widow and her mites. May she inspire me to give as I am able. Help me, Lord, to know what it means for me to give generously and sacrificially. Amen. Amen.
needs new visions. Bring the message of hope and love, of justice and peace to all that you meet. Live the dream. Make it a reality. Celebrate endings and new beginnings, challenges and promises. Live the new creation. Amen. Amen. And thanks, thanks be to, to God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful day. God has been so, so good. Oh, let's love on our youth again, church. Oh, wow. And thank you, Brother Dave and Miss Deanna, for your work and love of them. And just, you are welcome. Anytime you want to take over the ministry, come and let me know. I will sit down and be blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Hey there, angel girl. Hello there, angel girl. We want to say happy belated Veterans Day to all of our veterans. This is my little sailor here, sailorette. And we pray that God is has been kind and good. Um, we celebrate those that have gone before us and our veterans. My precious angel, little Titi. Huh? We thank God for her, her service and her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. But go and um, prepare yourselves. I know you want to get out of here and go get that food ready and you know, I got some Kleenex waiting in the office. If you want to take a, take a little couple boxes with you, then I'll be the one crying next week. So be nice to me if it doesn't go my way, okay? Be nice to me if it doesn't go my way. And brother, brother Deborah in my way, I should say. So we love you guys. We hope you have a wonderful game. And we all are, we all are still family, regardless of the outcome. So to God be the glory. Go now and take whole of the life that really is life. Shun the eagerness for money, but be rich in good works. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. And may God be your refuge and your fortress. May Christ Jesus free you from all that ensnares you, and may the Holy Spirit provide you with everything for godliness and contentment. We go in peace, my siblings in Christ, to love and serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Now unto him who keeps us from falling, unto him who says you have to sometimes have pain to gain. May his grace rest, rule, and abide, and be with you now henceforth. And God's people can say amen. 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 And amen. amen. Come, my sister. All right, lead us out there, booty booty. Yeah, we 
big time. Thank you for your service. <laughs> You're welcome. I, tell, I, I texted you oh, on Friday and landline. <laughs> oh, so they had silly number. Right? I came to thank them for the music. Oh, good. Yeah, thank you too. Yeah. Thank you too for the nice music. Appreciate it. Next time I want to play harmonica with you. Oh, yeah. We'll do a little song like Perfect. Yeah. It would sound good like uh, he's got the whole room. We could do that again. I do very simple music, but it sounds good with you. <laughs> yeah, right. It's good we went golfing. Her. I know. <laughs> yeah, all right. See you later. Yeah, I bye. Can, Thanks, girls. I got a note from Ted. He said, well, uh, snowshoe golfing is now open. Yeah. <laughs>